wife's choice for some time. Richard Dunwoody, the most experienced rider in the race. This is his 13th appearance. He's won twice, placed four. He's fallen and pulled up. So uh, he, he's, he knows it all. Here they come. Yes, there's Charlie Swan Royce waving to us. Paul Holly, Andrew Thornton, Brian Storey, John Supple, Dr. Turner. I don't think he's going to have a ride. Just wandering all through there, coming through now. But this is a very tense Jamie moment. Evans, the Australian. He's tried to ride in it twice before, and he's got Thornton. Thornton. Terry Duma, looks a very serious young man. We saw him interviewed before. Philip Hyde. Now then, lads, jockey Rod Farron went through. Chris Bonner. There's Lorcan Wire again. Knows his way out. Richard Johnson with that camera on his helmet. Policeman. What, what, he'll be escorting them in uh, later on, I hope. And Kenny Whelan went past just then. Uh, one of the tallest is Joe Tizard. Dean there's Gallagher. Dean Gallagher. And that was Seamus Durack going through. They're well escorted. Richard Dunwoody, he Looking knows this serious, long walk. Simon McNeil got a bit of an iffy ride there. But this, of course, Skew, is uh, what Richard, they want to do. Richard they? Guest, he's been second in the race. He's a cool customer. Carl looks pretty serious for him. He uh, yes. knows he's got a great chance, just against trying to take it all in. Pretty difficult time for the jockeys going here. The Punters all asking for autographs, etc. And it's uh, a time when you're trying to get your uh, mind on the race. This is Richard Johnson's view. So very shortly we'll see the uh, the features of David Nichols and all. Well, anyway, his jockey will see them and Darren Mercer, of course. That's right. You see the jockeys all wandering around, as I say. It's difficult to find your uh, connections because there's so many people in the paddock. And then you get lost with your horse. You, you, because you're in the middle there, you can't see where your horses are. And you can often end up walking in the wrong direction. But a happy look. Looking, uh, Richard Johnson, that's Darren Mercer, that's his brother. Uh, they must be uh, pretty uh, wound up, although they've had some huge successes with horses. This would be the one. Just seeing the angle of that camera skew, he'll want to keep his head down low, won't he, to give us the pictures we're after. Here is 15, him of praise, no blinkers today. Champion Charlie Swan from Ireland rides him. This is, uh, of course, Charlie's eighth ride in the race. He's completed five times. He's fallen at the first, and he's fallen at Beecher's Brook. We were having a chat about him earlier. Do you think he'll handle the ground? Him of praise, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, although he, he does stop in front, they've left the brick blinkers off because it would get him buzzing too much and that would make it difficult. He's 8-1 to one, uh, joint favourite now. I mean, the punters are getting a little bit confused with all this rain. They're look, going for the uh, soft ground horses quite rightly. I mean, this is a real stare. He's won over four miles and he's if he just adapts to the fences early, he hasn't had a great deal of experience, he's got a great chance. We're just here behind me at the Connections of Earth Summit now, co-favourite of three. We've got Carl Llewellyn getting instructions from Tom Jenks, who would have ridden the horse. Tom, I've absolutely no idea. No idea? <laughs> <laughs> he said to go out and get drunk last night, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm very delighted. Yeah. Well, best of luck. Have a good ride. Tom Jenks would have ridden the horse, but he's got a broken leg, so Carl Llewellyn takes over, rather similar to when he took over on party politics. Yeah, Nigel was... Payne looking very, very worried there. Carl looks the most relaxed of them. I mean, you've got to be a pretty brave man to be sort of joking about things like that when you're uh, about to go and ride in this race. Let's have a look at the market. Earth Summit, 8-1, to one, joint favourite with him of praise. But 9-1 to one drifting is Rough Quest. 9 to 1 Suny Bay, the same price Sam Lee, then 12 Challenger to look, 14 Northern Lad, Banjo at 16, Ciel de Brion, he'll have a chance at 20s, the same price Dune Bell the Mayor, and Killershin has come right down, rocketing down to 20 to 1 because of the ground. But that's what's interesting. All those horses in that betting have won or light soft ground. Challenge to luck may be the one exception. Richard Johnson's eye view, he's looking ahead of him at Narvan Lad. Will he be seeing that same backside as he comes up the run-in? Challenger to look and AP McCoy. We've marveled at this man this week. I wonder what will happen. This horse will either love it or he'll say no thank you. I think with Mr McCoy on his back, he's only got one choice. He'll have to enjoy it. I just wonder with this horse, he's been called an, an awful lot of names and he is a very, very good horse. But do you think he perhaps doesn't quite get the trip over the three mile? That could be the case, Skew, but surely he threw it away in the King George. I mean, he looked to do it all. I'd be worried about what he's done since, though. He didn't look happy at Wing Canton, and then he looked moody his last run. Yes, you, you, you could be right. I, I think we, you know, uh, he perhaps doesn't quite get home over the three mile. 
Montesquieu, if this horse was as genuine as his owner, David Johnson, he would be a sir. Let's have a look at them as they start to leave the parade ring. It's getting serious now. This is one of the big things about this race, is the huge uh, build-up. Joe White and Tim McCarthy. Yes, uh, Tim has had uh, a ride. He was finished ninth in the National. Joe White is a winner once over hurdles, has been successful in five of his 55 outings over fences, three times a winner in the 1995-1996 season. He has, uh, has his first run today since pulling up in a three-mile chase at Edinburgh uh, in December. He's hard to fancy off that. Riders having his second ride, Tim McCarthy. He's already finished uh, ninth here in one ride round. Long, long walk here to thread their way through the tented village. Yes, now I think this horse is the, the one I would worry most about for Earth Summit, Seal de Brion. As usually, brilliantly handled by Francois Dumas. Now, this boy, Thierry Dumas, is only a, a sort of coming out of his apprenticeship, but he's a very, very good rider. Very relaxed too, and that's what you've got to be. Well, the policemen are leading out Joe White there and Tim McCarthy handful of amateurs in this race and some very good ones. Radical Choice was after him, coming out with Brian Storey on board. There is uh, Young Supple Earth Summit. Carl Wellens, a veteran of this sort of race. Into the red, Dean Gallagher just uh, concentrating as he uh, comes through there. Paul Holly. There is Lorcan Wire next in the blue colours. Uh, Ian Bray, this owner, had a lot of uh, good success. Back, well, we're back to Lorcan again now. Again, a veteran. Lorcan has, has done the business well. He's, it's only his fourth ride. Uh, he did get to finish 16th once, though. It's a long way out still, and Joe White is still leading them. I think this will probably be the only time that he's leading them. It would be a big <laughs> surprise if he's still there at the end. There is the mighty St. Melian Fairway. He would love this ground. He can well be placed in this ground. There is Hill Walk coming through, challenge the luck. We've just had some amazing news. Sunny Bay is the best turned out, and Phil Sharp, who's been well, uh, he, a lot of column inches in the favours, gets 300 pounds from Martel for his efforts there. So it just shows um, grey horses don't often win these prizes, but obviously his dapples were shining through, and he's got the prize. That looks like Fabricator and John Supple. There's your horse, Skew. Earth Summit, he looks remarkably relaxed, doesn't he? Uh, that's a good sign. Certainly is, and after him into the red, Dean Gallagher. They are actually now coming onto the course, but yet it's not over because they're going to have to sort themselves yeah, out for the This parade. is an annoying time for the jockeys. You really want the race to be getting on now, but they will be circling them in two or three different circles, trying to get the horses into the right order for the parade, which you'll be going through in a minute. But uh, really, as I say, as a jockey, you, don't, you want the fuss over with now. Come on, we're on a horse. Uh, it is just an anxious time. There's Chris Maud and what a hand. There's Court Melody. Paul Nichols are looking very serious to the right for the blue shirt, just uh, t checking the girths of uh, Timmy Murphy. Northern Lad behind him, and just to the left, the white with the black stars. Yes, Northern Lad, big horse. He, he's got a lot of scope. He jumps well. David State, assistant to his wife there. And Joe Harvey, uh, her brother, going out with the horse. Well, everyone's uh, got a bird's eye view. Those who live locally don't have to pay to come in. Just get a pair of binoculars, open the window, don't worry about the rain. And what a price that would put on a house down the embankment. You can got a, a bird's eye view. And good to see so many more people coming out to the embankment this year. We want the people here. That makes the race. That's right. And as a jockey, you can hear the cheer from the uh, crowd as the... Uh Tape goes up and you can hear all the chatter all the way down to beaches. Skew, there are two greys in this. That's Diwali Dancer, the second of the Martin Pipe trains. Ray Alford, a great friend of Martin's, just seeing that uh, he was OK. Diwali Dancer, though, the trip is a huge worry for this one. Yeah, he jumps pretty well, hasn't he? He won three uh, uh, chases early in the season. Uh, Martin Pipe, multiple entries in this race. And with this soft ground, you know, we've seen Point Avon in the past. Who knows, if you can't, uh, if you don't compete, you can't win. Robert Thornton, Chocolate Bob, they call him. A young rider, good rider he is. And he's having his second ride. He fell at the 13th fence 12 months ago. 
It takes a while, they get them in two groups here in order to get them ready for the parade. 